Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to St. Patrick. We are so glad you're here with us this morning. Just a few reminders before Mass. If you'll please silence any cell phones or any other noise-making devices. In addition, we are asking everyone, vaccinated and unvaccinated, to wear a mask to protect each other and especially the children and our immunocompromised. Also, please take care as you approach others. And if you'll stand and join us in our opening hymn, there's a wideness in God's mercy.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. We're a Catholic church. Different communities, but bonded together. And as we gather this Sunday, St. Patrick's, I want to welcome families that have come from New Orleans uh, because of the coming Hurricane Ida. We want to assure them of our prayers for all their loved ones and for the, all the people in that community. And in the back row is a couple, Akia and Terry, whom I officiated at their wedding years ago, and their two twins uh, that are here with us. So for all of these, we want to remember today, as we gather, Let's first call upon God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the heart. our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people. He said, So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who when they hear all the statutes will say, surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. Religion that is pure and defile, undefiled before God, the Father, is this to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile them, but the things that come out of a person are what defile them. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly, All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord.
In today's gospel, Jesus' disciples broke the rules. They went against the rituals of, of purity with regard to food, which the chosen people were called to be faithful to. In fact, when I was ending my seminary training, as a deacon, I worked in Kenya and Africa. And when I took the airplane back to where I was studying, it was LL Airlines, the official airlines of Israel. And Walter, I learned the kitchen on those planes is much larger than all the other kitchens we see compact on other airlines because of the special cleansing of the utensils, everything being kosher. In fact, in St. Mark's Gospel, which we are returned to after four weeks of listening to John's Gospel, in St. Mark's Gospel earlier, the religious leaders became angry with Jesus because to them, he was breaking the rules. He was not doing what was lawful on the Sabbath. And he spent a whole lot of time with the riffraff, those folks who had a bad reputation and you stayed away from. By the start of chapter three of Mark's gospel, the religious, deceit, dis, religious leaders had already decided to destroy Jesus, to put him to death because he broke the rules. Jesus lashed out in today's gospel. Quote, you abandon the commandment of God and you hold to human traditions. The main point of the gospel, St. Patrick's, is that everything must come, quote, from the human heart in Jesus' words, from deeply within, and from deeply within, it's who we become and how we are to act. Earlier in the month, a parishioner reminded me that this month of August, was when Franz Jagerstatter died. It was in 1943 that this Catholic truly lived, quote, from within the heart and was true to his conscience. He was a regular guy in Austria in his mid-30s, with his wife, and they had three children. He was a farmer in a small town. Yet, Jackerstatter, a layperson like all of you, and as a young adult, his Catholic faith took a deeper hold on him. Five years earlier, in 1938, Hitler overrun Austria and annexed it to what he called, quote, the greater Germany. There was a vote of the people of Austria and they ratified this annexation. And in the small town where Jagerstatter lived, everyone voted in favor of the annexation but one vote, Jack Ristatter's. In his conscience, 
he could not give approval to the Hitler regime. And, it's, and among other things, the extermination of Jews and others. In 1943, Franz Jagerstadter received his induction notice to Hitler's army. It was his moment of conscience. He went, John, and spoke with his parish priest and also with the local bishop. They both told him to obey Hitler's orders. His wife and neighbors told him he needed to follow what he was told. Zagerstatter was all alone except within his conscience. After voicing his refusal to be inducted in Hitler's army, he was imprisoned for five months, and then in August of 1943, he was beheaded, quote, as an enemy of the country. As Jagerstatter put it, and I quote from him, not everything which this world considers a crime is a crime in the eyes of God. Friends, I want us, as we talk about living from deep within our heart, what Pope Francis said soon after he was elected Bishop of Rome. Listen, I quote from him. So we also, like Jesus, must learn to listen more to our conscience. Be careful, however. This does not mean we ought to follow our ego, do whatever interests us, whatever suits us, whatever pleases us. This is not conscience. Conscience is the interior space in which we can listen and hear the truth, the good, the voice of God. St. Patrick's, it's really not about keeping the rules only. It's from the human heart, listening there, and from deeply within being who we are called to be and how we are to act, praying to be faithful to our conscience. Franz Jagerstatter went against the tide and stayed true to his conscience. In these very hard times of ours, by grace, may we be true to our conscience. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, in our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly, we bring our prayers. You call your church to holiness. Strengthen all the baptized to embrace the gospel and live it from the heart into action. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You call us to praise. Sing in the hearts of all and let our prayer reach to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You call us to justice. Give hope to Afghans and to the people of Haiti in their suffering. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You call us to solidarity. Inspire all of us to show care in safeguarding others from the Delta variant and give healing to all who suffer from the pandemic. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You call us to be of support. Give relief to those in the path of Hurricane Ida and to those suffering from the flooding in Waverly and Middle Tennessee. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You call us to eternal life. Give blessed assurance to all who have died, especially the 13 U.S. troops and nearly 200 others killed in the Kabul attack. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bless you, O God. We bless you that you have given us the gift of faith that we might follow your sons. Deepen now his Holy Spirit among us that we might sift out your will in our lives and faithfully carry it out to your glory and to the common good of humanity. Grant this to Christ the Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O God, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spare us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, Filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. Yet, before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in the everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. 
As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race, Look kindly, most compassionate God, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake the one bread and one cup, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ, healed of every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, together with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, and with our deceased sisters and brothers, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So with our one high priest, we have given our God all glory and praise. Taught by Jesus, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever, forever and ever. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of that peace. For those who were with us by means of the streamed mass and who miss very much not being able to take part in the Eucharist, but as you do so through your participation in the mass in this way, know that by your spiritual communion, as you're called, as we're called from our heart to follow who we're called to be and act, know that that Jesus will give you that grace, especially in these hard times. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy, worthy that you should enter to my room, room but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O God, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated. And as I mentioned last Sunday, in all the parishes of our diocese, a second collection is being taken up as ours is right now for the suffering people of Haiti and our support for them. Between the two masses, over in the annex, uh, there was an open house for our catechesis of the Good Shepherd. And it was so good to see many of our younger children and early teenagers who, uh, who were there as our catechists get ready on the 12th of September to begin to meet on Sundays. Uh, and also, I would like to read what I sent out by flock note to all the parish. I'm reading it each of the masses this Sunday. Earlier this month, Pope Francis taught clearly about the importance of getting vaccinated. Listen to him. Quote, getting vaccinated is a simple yet profound way to care for one another especially the most vulnerable, unquote. Getting the COVID jabs, as Pope Francis put it, is, quote, an act of love for oneself, love for our families and friends, and love for all people. I hope that all of us at St. Patrick's are vaccinated. In fact, more than 96% of the people in Memphis area hospitals suffering with COVID-related illnesses are unvaccinated. That's a scary warning. For this reason, I say this. If you are not yet vaccinated, please do so as soon as possible, heeding Pope Francis Council. Until you are vaccinated or until health officials say the pandemic is no longer a health threat, do not come to Sunday Mass at St. Patrick's. As your pastor, I'm trying to say that lovingly as Pope Francis did. You may participate in Mass by following the stream to Mass at 11 o'clock each Sunday. If you are not vaccinated, even if you are wearing a mask, you may be a serious health danger to others, especially to our smaller children who are here, here each Sunday and whom we want to be here, but who are not yet able to be vaccinated. <coughs> if there's anything about that that you wish to, to speak with me, please contact me or see me after Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Thanks be to God. Wonderful she week, did a everyone. great job. I told her that. Uh, and we have donuts <laughs> in the annex if you'd like to join us for social hour. <laughs>